Another somewhat advanced command line parameter manipulation technique is the use of the set minus minus command. Set the, there is a command called set, it's a built-in shell command and it's used to set the command line parameters for the shell that is currently being processing. Now I have actually mentioned earlier that $1 through $9 are read-only which means you can't set them individually. However, you can set them collectively using set minus minus. This is how you might do it. You'd say set space minus minus space and then you would type in the parameters that you wanted the shell to pretend to use, if you like, as command line parameters. Now they're not real command line parameters uh, as you understand, but what will happen in this circumstance will that be that file1.txt is put into the $1 variable and the $2 variable gets set to Fred. You'll actually find that the set minus minus option is commonly used with the back quotes feature, like so. You might say set minus minus and then inside backwards quotes who piped to grep Fred. Now what that will do of course is if Fred is logged in then the command line parameters of the shell will be set to the output of the who command as far as the user Fred is concerned. So in other words there will be five command line parameters. One will be the username Fred followed by the terminal name then the month, the day and the time which if you recall is exactly what each line of the who command looks like. Let's have a look at that now. I can use that, I don't have to use it in a shell script, I can use it just on the shell's command line itself so I could say take the output from the ls program and make that my set of command line parameters so let's have a look at that, we don't get any output of course it's just simply setting some variables so now we might have a look at echo dollar star, we'll have a look now at all the command line variables now obviously there wouldn't have been any command line variables before because this is a command line shell but now of course we have some and you can use exactly this technique inside a shell script you might say for example echo dollar nine which now is just the word palm test this uh, technique set minus minus is especially useful in setting default command line parameters because what might happen is you might require some command line parameters for your shell script to operate successfully and if the user actually forgets to put them in or invokes your shell script without typing them in then you can obviously do a little test for that and say okay well they didn't type in any so let's use set minus minus to set some ourselves, which is very handy. Here's an example of that this shell script is supposed to take two parameters it doesn't say that anywhere but it just is. So I might specify those two parameters and I might just uh, well the name of the script first of course and then mark and term 21 for example so it says mark is logged in on term 21 now if I call this script and I don't specify any parameters at all then what it will do as you can see is it will take the parameters and set them from the output of the who command pipe to grep mvirtue in other words the mvirtue login details so let's try that mvirtue is logged in on pts45 which I'm going to assume is correct because $1 has now been set to mvirtue and $2 has now been set to pts45 there's also a $3, a $4 and a $5 as well but I didn't ask those to be echoed out this is how I might get those to be echoed out, is a nice little technique um, I might do a shift 2 and then echo since dollar star now that of course will pick up all the command line parameters but I've actually skipped over dollar one and dollar two so it'll just give me dollar three dollar four and dollar five so let's see what that looks like and there we go since September 5th 1547 so there's a little demonstration of using shift with a parameter as well there is another advanced command line parameter manipulation technique that I can show you this one's a little more obscure than the other ones this is 
all about using the IFS variable. So what's all that about? Well, when we set those command line parameters, in, uh, like we saw in the last module using set minus minus, the parameters that we actually specify are separated by spaces and, well, and or tabs. Now it's actually possible to change that. We don't have to have the parameters separated by spaces. We can have them separated by anything we want. We can use the IFS variable. IFS is short for internal field separator to designate which characters we wish to use to separate the various command line parameters. For example, we could set IFS to be the vertical bar symbol, what you might call the pipe symbol. And then, if you wanted to use set minus minus to set command line parameters, you would do it like this. Set minus minus, and then parameter 1, pipe parameter 2, pipe parameter 3. Now notice here that the space between the word parameter and the 1 and between the next parameter and the 2 and so on is actually now no kind of special character at all. The special character is now the pipe symbol and so $1 will get set to parameter space 1 and $2 will get set to parameter space 2 and so on. Let's have a look at a more practical example using IFS. This is a similar example to one that we saw a little earlier where we say if there are no parameters on the command line then we set them ourselves and then we just simply echo out some of those parameters. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get the command line parameters from the etc password file. So the first thing I'd like to do is actually run this command line and see what it looks like grep mvirtue slash etc password. So let's do that grep mvirtue slash etc slash password and it just gives me all of the details about my login account. Now we can see there each of the parameters or each of the uh, fields I guess of that database are separated from the next by a colon. So if I actually wanted to make those $1, $2, $3, $4 and so on then I'd actually have to use the IFS variable to designate that the colon is the character used to separate one parameter from the next. And that is, as you can see, exactly what I'm doing, IFS equals colon. So $1 is going to be my username now and $6 is going to be, well, theoretically my home directory. Let's see if I can't make that run. Home directory for mvirtue is slash home slash mvirtue. Well, that's very nice. And just for good measure, I'll echo dollar star and run that. And the variables are mvirtue, then x, and 3040, and so on and so on. Notice that the colons have all gone. In their place are actual spaces, which I guess just proves that the IFS variable is doing its job. Okay, that's the end of this module. Let's move on.